kept my mouth shut for 25 years. Now that you're back, I want you to go to Tulsa. Not exactly the welcome I was expecting. What crew runs this neighborhood? No crew up in here, we're in the middle of nowhere. I'll protect you from the gangs. What gangs? Sit down! You got a pretty good appetite for someone who was just shot at. Tulsa King, new series streaming November 13th, exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. Basketball season is in full swing, and you know what that means. Buzzer beaters, anchor breakers, poster dunks, and can't miss offers at DraftKings Sportsbook. Calling all new customers. Sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook and use promo code SMOKE. Bet $5 on any pregame money line wager, and you'll receive an additional $200 in free bets if your bet hits. Make sure you check out the All the Smoke Same Game Parlay. We're cooking up a new bet every Friday. So check out the app tomorrow to see who we're riding with. Let's get this money together. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code SMOKE and receive $200 in free bets if their pregame money line bet hits after placing a $5 wager. That's promo code SMOKE only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Welcome back to All The Smoke. Out here at Vegas Summer League at the beautiful Legends Suite here at the uh, Wynn Hotel. We just had one good one. We got another good one. Another good Former one. Former teammate. O'Kill. Um, <clears throat> man, welcome to the show. Jerry Stackhouse. We appreciate <laughs> yes, you, man. Yes, How sir, you doing? Man, appreciate you. Slide that in there, bro. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? The heel. The heel. The heel. They don't know about that. Know about the heel. Well, let's, I mean, let's start the show with it. Talk about it. Y'all talk about the Oak Hill. What well, it's, it's funny we, that he's here, that we both here, because uh, the great Steve, uh, Steve Smith just retired. Yeah. Um, I was able to be at the retirement, uh, his retirement party, and it was awesome, man, just to see all the lives he affected. And uh, for me, to give me an opportunity to, to play basketball, coming from where I came from, I didn't think I could reach that height at high school. So uh, I looked up to him. But you, you experienced it, too. You probably, in the top three, Maybe top two all-time scorers of the school, I think. Yeah, I mean, for the season, man, we got we was getting after it, man. Jeff McInnes was probably the main reason that I went to Oak Hill. Yeah. You know, we played together that summer, and he was just begging me to, like, yo, man, come on, we can be might as well do the same thing and, and take it to high school. We wound up both going to North Carolina. But, yeah, it was, you know, they were going to Hawaii, going to Vegas. I was like, yo, man, that, that, that sounds like a good trip to me. In high good, school. Good, good, yeah, in high school, so... Um, I, I made the made the trip. My mom, we we jumped up in the car and driving up to Oak Hill for the first time. Oh man, we came in on the back road too, Jack. We didn't even come in on the first <laughs> road, so it was like the mountains, loose gravel in the mountains and everything. But nah, it was it, it was a great experience for me, and uh, you know, definitely shout out to, to Steve Smith, one of yeah. the, one of the best to ever do it for sure. Mm. What's the day to day life like for you now? Obviously, out here at Summer League, we'll get into coaching at Vandy, but what's what's your day to day these days like? Well, right now, I just came to spend some time with my guys. I got, you know, it's good to have a few guys that you coach that's in you know, in the Summer League now, not only ones that I coached at Vanderbilt, you know, Scotty, you know, Aaron E. Smith, Saban Lee, mm -hmm. um, but a couple of kids that I coached back in grassroots when I had my Stackhouse Elite mm -hmm, program. Yeah. Uh, Romello White's playing with Portland, the Mod Cavers with Phoenix. So it's just good, man, to see you know things come full circle for where they all dreamed to be, and for them to finally get that chance. I want to share it with them. Mm -hmm. So Scotty, you had him the last three years. He came out early, uh, didn't get drafted, picked up by the Lakers summer league team. Uh, has played solid in the yeah. summer league. What have you seen from Scotty, and how was he as as a, a player under your program? Yeah, he's been doing well, man. He's a sponge. You know, he's going to just get better and better. It's great. He's going to be around a lot of older guys, you know, veteran guys that know how to play. And I think he's going, you know, he's going kind of bring some energy, bring some life. I think that's what they need. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that team is yeah. kind of, I'm happy for D. Ham and, you know, mm -hmm. being able to get that gig. But they're going to have to inject some, a little bit of an energy in there. Hopefully he can bring that, 
um, to the table. He's he's just had to work on his ball security. He can score the basketball. He knows how to play. He's I mean he's a son. I mean obviously I feel like our development was 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 really good for him. But hell, he's a, he's a son of a Hall of Famer. Right. So, you no know, so he you know never take that for granted. That you know he had a lot of those just understanding and knacks of how to play the game. Um, before I ever saw him. Shit you can't buy. No, mm -hmm. stuff that you can't buy, and yeah. I think he's going he's, he's gonna be really good. I'm, I'm excited for him. Talk about growing up in uh, Kinston, NC. What that like? Oh, man, it, it, it was cool. I mean, I grew up the, the youngest of eight boys. Oh, you got so, a whole bunch yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. You was getting your ass whipped. I my ass whooped, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that was, but, but it was fun. Like, my, 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 older, my older brother, like, probably my third oldest, you know, he just always made things com competitive. Yeah. You know, whether it was, you know, getting out in the yard, banging with me and, you know what I'm saying, letting me win a little bit and then he tightened up on you a little bit, you know, put you back in your place. Yeah. But it was just, you know, fun to watch it. I just had my family reunion this this past weekend over the July 4th and he was still out there with the young kids, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, playing dodgeball, playing, mm -hmm. you know, volleyball, whatever, kickball, whatever. That's, that's still his thing, man. And, and and that's a lot of where I got my competitiveness from, just being able to, wanting to compete against them on the win. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just, you know, they were always coming back. Cause I'm not the oldest, a big gap between my brothers. Like my mom had me when she was 45. So mm -hmm. I was kind of like an afterthought. So I had like older brothers, brothers I could go and, you know, spend the night with, away from, mm -hmm. and do some things that you, you know, probably mm -hmm. couldn't do at, at, at home, home, you know, right. with older bros. But no, they definitely taught me uh, the game of mom and dad. Like I said, small town, man, we got a lot of talent that come yeah. from, from that small yeah. town. Brandon Cedric Ingram. Maxwell, Brandon yep. Ingram, you know what I'm saying? Just the Reggie Bullock, mm -hmm. you know, name after name that, that come out of that little town. Who are some of your um, influences, people you looked up to? Man. Around the time. So obviously MJ, you know, being from North Carolina, yeah. um, you know, uh, just, you know, had those comparisons coming out of high school, mm -hmm. you know, in high school, I was 6'6". Six, six. I really wasn't even a guard. I was a power forward, you know what I'm saying? And then I, I never really played shooting guard until I got to the NBA. I even played, she was a center. I was a power forward mm -hmm. on those North Carolina teams. But, you know, it was just, you know, just watching them, seeing, seeing those guys come through North Carolina. I mean, I was a big ACC fan. Wasn't necessarily a Carolina fan at, at first. I, I watched all of the team. You know, I was Lenny Bias when he was at, mm. at Maryland. I was on there mm -hmm. when, you know, Charles Shackelford was at NC State. I like State with Johnny Dawkins and, and those guys at Duke. I like Duke. So I, I just kind of love watching basketball. And then as I learned more about Dean Smith and, um, you know, the players that have come through that program, it was just hard for me to tell him no. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When you see, you know, Sam Perkins and uh, MJ, <laughs> Worthy. James Worthy, yeah. and all those guys that have come through and learned, to, you know, learn how to play the game from from him mm -hmm. and then go on to have that other success. And, you know, like I said, those, I really like, I wore like 42 because of James Worthy. Mm -hmm. you know, like I said, okay. that was like my favorite player when he was with the Lakers. Mm -hmm. I know he wore 52 in North Carolina, but man, just big game. James was, was my so, guy. You know something else. Do, do kids in North Carolina, because I know like, Growing up in Texas, a lot of the kids like, I want to play for the Rockets when I grow up, dude. Like, is that like what kids say, I want to go play for North Carolina when I grow up? I want to be a Tar Heel. Well, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, blue blood. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, it's the skin that we're, where we are and how we're recruiting. It's like, you know, when those when those teams, kids can love you and say how much they love you and they want to be there and they want the academics and, you know, and then when those blue bloods come calling, you know, and it's just, <laughs> it kind of changes, changes it up a little bit. And, but, you know, they've earned the right to, to to, to do that, you know, mm -hmm. when you had as many guys that have come through there where, you know, you know, Vince Carr, like I said, I ain't even, you know, once mm -hmm. you start those names and you start talking about the next tier with myself, Rashid, uh, uh, Vince, Antoine, you know, the list goes on and on and on, you know, uh, of, of guys that have con continued to come and, and, and represent that brand really, really well. I love it. You know, I'm still a Tar Heel to the mm -hmm. day I die. I mean, I love where I'm at. I love that Vanderbilt and score doors all day, anchor down. But, <laughs> you know, I, I bleed that blue for yes, real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for so, real, yeah. I'm, I'm North Carolina born bred. Born you know what I'm saying? Yes, so, you know, some, we got some imports, but that's where I, I, I come from that soul. That's all, yeah. We're back for season four of All the Smoke and very excited to have alongside of us our partner, Moneyline. Yeah, Moneyline's family, they've been our ride or die. This year ain't no different. Definitely. And stay locked in because Moneyline is providing dope experiences, 
prizes, stuff we can't really talk about, but just know, man, when you're messing with Moneyline, they're always providing amazing experiences. They brought me and Jack out to Vegas to experience our first NASCAR event. Moneyline is the only app you'll ever need. Cash advances, credit building, investing, and expert advice. Download the Moneyline app today or visit moneyline.com backslash all the smoke to learn more. Before you end up at Carolina, what was your recruiting process like? Uh, Any crazy stories, yeah, fun man, stories? No, it was like, you know, I, I, I had to I, I had to bag offered to me and all that, but I was scared of it, man. I knew for sure if I left North Carolina, all these schools around me in the ACC that, you know, going out and, and doing something different, you know, everybody was promising everything. Coach Smith was the only one that didn't really like, you know, if you, you know, I, I won a lot of games and, um, you know, I, I, and I like to win games, so I, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to play the guys to help me win. And then that was kind of his message to me, and I, it gravitated, you know, I really gravitated to that, you know, so instead of somebody coming and say, you're going to play 40 minutes, right. you're going to jump over all the guys that's been there, like, these guys are going to do the same thing to me to the next guy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But he just kind of put it out there. You know, really, I wanted to kind of bring the glory back, to be, to be honest, because they hadn't won since, like, MJ had, had left, right, mm -hmm. to, like, in the 80s, like, 82. So it's like, we want to come in, and lo and behold, they win it the year right before I come in. But, I, you know, I kept that commitment and whatnot. And then, you know, I was she. You know, J Mac, all those guys, we were coming in and then we was going against those seniors that just wanted. And we came in, you know how we came in. Swag, you know? <laughs> swaggy. Swagged all the way out, you know what I'm saying? A different, different probably breed than what they have seen before. You know, mm -hmm. we kind of, you know, brash, you know, a little bit, just, you know, too talk. You know, he, he did yeah. most of the talking for us. And, you know, and then just from a talent standpoint, I think uh, what, you know, Sheed and I brought to the table was just different. You that know, was guys a crazy that mix, was, man. Mm. You know, coming in and you know we was trying to dunk everything. That's mm -hmm. you know, that's where it was. We, but we could shoot. We had a skill set, but for the most part, we we was trying to put you in that rim and trying to protect rim. the rim. Damn. Jeff McGinnis is one of the best college point guards of all time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, I'm telling you, I still hadn't had anybody put that thing up there the way that, that mm -hmm. he did on time, on target. They talk about on time, on target. <laughs> yeah, Jeff put that thing on time, yeah. on target, man. And it was fun learning from. From Coach Smith being able to to win at a high level, you know, playing with that type of talent, you know, around us, you know, we didn't even, I had no no thought process of leaving college, even when I did, I didn't, didn't know I was gonna leave at two. Again, like I said, Michael Jordan was my role model. I felt mm -hmm. like my blueprint was, if, if anything, was to leave okay. after three years, you know, and then it was just like after my freshman year, it's like I was on a mock draft, like whoa, and then you know, my sophomore year. We have a great year, and um, you know, Coach Smith started calling around, and you know, I think Kevin McHale was at Minnesota at the time, and they had the fifth pick, and he's like, "Oh, if he's there at five, I'm taking him." Went out and worked out for the, just only the four teams before that. I didn't even go to Minnesota; I just worked out with those four teams, and Philadelphia snatch, snatched me up with the, with the third pick in '95. Before we get there, we just had Sheed, and he was telling us about a summer going into your sophomore year where you and MJ was going at it. Yeah, she man. said, she, what, what was she's words? All I could say was, they was going at it. And you held your own. <laughs> he, say, he, 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 he said, did they, you said somebody didn't take score, it wasn't no score. No, no. no it was, it was going at it, back and forth. Man, it was just like, uh, yeah. just to see MJ, man. Like, you know, come everybody into the gym. Everybody was scared but you. you. Know, come, come into the gym, and he, and everybody been talked about it. And again, a lot of the hype that I had coming into to North Carolina Comparisons. was, you know, being 6'6", mm -hmm. bald head from North Carolina, from the east coast of North Carolina, that had, had a lot of the things that, um, I did in, in my state hadn't been done since, you know, since MJ. So it was naturally to have those comparisons. But I, I, it was more flattering for me than anything. But, you know, I'm, I'm a competitor. Again, like I said, I, I'm the youngest of eight boys. Man. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan's just another brother to me. You That's know what I'm saying? Yeah, she, I'm trying to... She <laughs> say, I'm not doing it. I'm icing. I'm good. Y'all go let Mike do that to y'all. Yeah. But you the only one stepped up to the plate. No doubt. I mean, I look forward to the opportunity. And, man, I was uh, nervous as hell. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, I got out there. And then all of a sudden, once I got comfortable like anything else, you know, I kind of got into my bag and a little bit driving. Um, you know, he was giving me the jump shot, you know, sh shoot it, shoot it, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I could, couldn't really shoot it like that at that time, so I'm still trying to, trying to drive it around him and getting, you know, getting there again, trying to use my strength because I was probably about 218, 220 when mm -hmm. I was playing. And again, like I said, I was power forward and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was my mindset. 
But no, it was it was experience I I never forget. I mean, over the years and different things, different situations, people try to paint a story of, of me against Michael Jordan. And that's definitely not the case, mm -hmm. man. I, I wouldn't be here sitting where I'm at today mm -hmm. without him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I said, he saved my ass more than one time. I mean, you know, when I was <laughs> probably in the eighth or ninth grade, you know what I'm saying? I was like, and I got an earring, you know what I'm saying? Went in there and I come home, try to sit at the breakfast table, sitting with the earring, and I finally turned my mom like, boy, what you got in your ear? Yeah, then, you know, cause they, you know, I've come from a religious family. It wasn't about all that. And then um, I, you know, caught it for a day or so. And then I showed him a picture with Michael Jordan had an earring on there and it was all cool for him. <laughs> so it's so it like, even with mom, whatever MJ did was, That's the was standard. okay. You good. Yeah, that was it. So, I love but it. no, it's just, you know, over the, uh, the course of, you know, competing and playing against a man, just, you know, with those Bulls teams, we all, you know, we wanted, wanted to beat him. And then mm -hmm. once it kind of turned, um, he still hung around a long time there at the end, and we was able to play together. Get, you know, no, even before that, get a little payback when okay, we was in yeah. Detroit before yeah. I, before oh, I yeah. played with him in Washington. Mm -hmm. um, so, but not then to, to play with him in uh, you know in Washington, and just from my perspective, you know, at the time I was ready to at the height in my prime. Ready to go. And but it's MJ. MJ still, you know, in his mind, he's the best in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and so obviously we had a little bit of clash there, but no, nah, we, we we're still great. I just saw him this past weekend in, in Nashville at the <clears throat> NASCAR. You know, he's got the you know the car racing teams and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So I went in in the suite and kicked it with him a little bit, man. He's, you know, always, whatever you need, young fella, you know, so it's, it's <laughs> good. The perception that may be out there on the outside, right. but, you know, there's some some animosity between us. That's just from being competitive and being, right. you, know, you know, in that moment at the time in yeah. 2003, with nobody seeing me at that time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's as I see it, you know, so you had some things happening, but, but you know, Jack. You yeah, know, that's how it go. You know, I'm gonna get 30. That's how it goes. That's just how it goes. I'm gonna get 30. Okay, who guard me? That's so right. That's 30. how it goes. Before yeah. we get to the NBA, backpedal a little bit. Your relationship with, uh, you know, the late, great Dean Smith. What are some, some of the things you took from the time you had, the two years with him? Uh, so much, man. It was just like I, I didn't even really realize, you know, who I was. Like, I, again, we was young. We was dumb. He, he told me, like, I was like I was going to his office one day, like, man, you know, why ain't playing more? We killing these guys in practice, you know what I'm saying? He told me, like, you and Brian Reese need to try to be the best small forward in the country together. And I was like, you know, coach, I feel like I can be the best small forward in the country by myself. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's crazy that I was sitting here having this uh, this dialogue. And I was like, I mean, it was up and down that, that, that first year, you know, dealing with all of the lessons that he was trying to teach me. And I was like, man, I, I you know, I tell my mom after one game, you know, during the midseason, I'm like, I don't know if this is the place for me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, so I, so I get it with, with all these kids. Now it's, it comes full circle. Um, but it's like, you know, she just, she heard me out. She listened to my whole, you know, whole spiel about this and that and the other, what I'm doing in practice, why I shouldn't be playing more. I'm, I'm averaging 12 in 18 minutes now. So, you know, mm -hmm. so I feel like I should- Per minute. You know, get, per, per minute, I'm mm -hmm. leading the team. <laughs> but, you know, but she told me something, man, that resonated with me is just like, you know, if, if you start running now, she heard me out. Like, if you start running now, you're going to be running the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that just like, so I stuck it out, you know, two weeks later, I'm the most valuable player at the ACC tournament. Mm. So it's like, man, you really know, I guess out. I always tell people the moral of that story is listen to your mama. Man. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? So she, she, gonna, she gonna tell you what's right, you know? And, and I should have known, like when, I, when it came to the recruiting trip, I had like Michigan Steve Fisher. It came in that morning, probably around, you know, around lunchtime. You know, my mom had some donuts and some coffees and Coach Smith was coming in at the, you know, in the afternoon, about two. Probably about 1.15, I started hearing, you know, smelling pork chops frying, you know, cabbage, you know, she had everything. She's, she said, I didn't even really know if she knew who Dean Smith was. But, you know, just that little gesture right there kind of pushed me even more to that direction. They were about the same age. They really hit it off. But just, just learning all of those, I mean, most of the stuff, the basis of what I do now is from him, mm. right? So it's like the, our defensively keeping the ball out the middle. You know, I'm strictly a no-middle team, having mm -hmm. the low help come, you know, sharing the ball, um, still, you know, moving in, you know, moving in motion, playing, you know, rebounding the basketball, getting to the foul line, all those things, the analytic side of basketball, he was way ahead of the game, man. He was a math major. I, I, I heard a, uh, a story that, you know, we're like th three minutes in the game, you know, he looked up at the score and then wrote it on the paper, you know, what the final score was going to be, and it was exactly what it was. Mm. 
That's crazy. Crazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just how he could, you know, see the possession, see how the game was flowing. I mean, we, could, we all hope to, you know, be able to, um, to, to see the game from that perspective. But I, but I took a lot from him and a lot from the, a lot of the other coaches that I coached for, for too. I mean, for Avery Johnson was, was big mm -hmm. in my development, but look at this kind of tree, you know, where, you know, Dean Smith, who, you know, coached tall Larry Brown, Larry Brown, tall Greg Popovich, mm -hmm. Greg Popovich, tall Avery Johnson. So it was like, mm -hmm. you know, once I had, you know, Coach Smith and then once I got to Avery when it was like, you know, 10 years later, boom, like all of that stuff came back together. And we had such a great synergy and relationship because we've all kind of come from the same thought process of how the game should be played and, 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 and how you should share the flow with other good players. It's never too early to play holiday music. And it's also never too early to start thinking about gifts, whether it's for your friends or your friends in your pants. You can make this holiday season jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the lawnmower 4.0. Avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Then add in Manscaped's top of the line shower products to have the people thinking, all I want for Christmas is you. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. It has everything you need to help deck the halls from your face to your balls just in time for the mistletoe season. The Performance Package has each product from the best-selling Performance Package Plus. Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, and the Ultra Premium Deodorant. It's the best way to smell fresh from your Santa hat to your candy cane. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and the Weed Whacker Nose, Ear, and Hair Trimmers feature a proprietary skin-safe technology to protect those delicate presents. Plus, both are waterproof, so there's no issue cleaning the snow off of your driveway. There's also a 4000K LED light on it, so you can light up the way like Rudolph. Now that you've groomed your candy cane, it's time to make sure you don't smell like a reindeer with the Platinum Package shower products. All of Manscaped shower gear is sulfate-free, vegan, and made to have your skin feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. But smelling good doesn't stop in the shower. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner can solve them stank problems all day long. And once it touches your sack, trust me, you'll never go back. And for the perfect stocking stuffer, add in the brand new Body Buffer, an incredible body scrubber that makes exfoliating easy and a lot cleaner than the old loofah. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SMOKE at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code SMOKE. Manscaped. Get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. Two years in NC, <clears throat> you make the final four and you clap for the draft. Was that an easy decision to make? Well, it was at the time, man, um, because my, my mom had got sick. Again, my, I talked about my parents being a little older. My mom had, had breast cancer, and, um, you know, and I just thought that was an opportunity to, you know, she not gonna have to work anymore. You know, I could be able to take care of my family. Uh, so it was it was a pretty easy decision for me. I mean, again, especially when I knew that I would, you know, go in, in the top four pick. Right. You know, it just felt like, and then she, you know, she left too, you know what I'm saying? He left first. So it's like, are we still going, you know, kind of have the same impact, you know, going forward. Uh, I didn't know Vince Carter and Antoine Jameson was going to be Vince Carter and Antoine right. Jameson. Right. Dude, I might have had to think about mm. it. I mean, it would have been crazy. You one time? It, oh, you, my. Vince, dude, Juan. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Jeff, Jeff, you know what I'm saying? That's, Jamon, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's an instant uh, national championship. No, I, I still, I mean, I think about it again, but like at the time, you, know, know. you, know, you, you don't know. You don't know. Gotta and go. Then, so it's like, I mean, I gotta, I gotta do this for, you know, for my family. And, mm -hmm. I, and I felt like, you know, she's still with me today. Right. Mm -hmm. 93 mm -hmm. years old. You know, she's actually in the hospital now. You know, keep her in your prayers, but man. Definitely will. Um, no, I'm so, so I, I definitely felt like I made that. Uh, a great decision for that yeah, alone. And absolutely. I still, still have her in my life, and she's still, you know, still on. We got Zoom service. She's a pastor. She still gets up oh, there wow, and okay. give us a good word. Beautiful. You know, you know, every second Sunday, man. So it's, um, it's no secret that I'm here, man. It ain't for all the great things that I've done, but it's from those prayers and things that, that, that she's mm -hmm. she, she's still sending up for us. 
That top five, that, that, that top five, Joe Smith, McDice, yourself, Sheed, and then KG. Uh, she was just telling me, because I was research, uh, you know, doing my studying before you came, and I was like, damn, I was like, I, I didn't know that she, uh, uh, Stackhouse went one pick for you to Philly. He's like, man, I was so happy for him, because he's like, I, I felt like I, I wasn't ready to go home and mm -hmm. play there. He's like, I'm so glad Stack went third and I went fourth, because I wasn't mature enough to handle playing at home. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it was like when you when going back to it, I, with the stability or instability that we had in Philadelphia at the time, I wish it might have, <laughs> I, I would have taken that, that, that pick behind them. But no, it was, uh, it, it was great. You know, I mean, I was just, man, going to a situation as a 20 year old, you know, mm -hmm. I felt like we supposed to be winning, right? I was, you know, so it was like when I was, when we were losing and that's the first time I ever really lost in my life. You know, I was coming home. I wasn't going out. I wasn't doing nothing. I thought everybody in the street was looking at me like, man, what's what's wrong? Right. I didn't realize that we weren't supposed to be winning, man. You played with 30 guys and a bunch of them wasn't in the in the NBA, you know, uh, you know, the previous year. So mm -hmm. it's like, so th those are things that just, it helped you to grow though. I mean, you had to, you know, but the thing about it was just trying to prove that you could play. You, you, you weren't thinking about coming in there uh, other doing anything other than, you know, trying to, to prove that I belonged in this league. Mm -hmm. And, and that, I think that was the, the, the first step. And then once you, you know, you, you showed that, that's when you start thinking about winning. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's probably really why a lot of it didn't, it didn't work out for us in Philly. We, we had some talented teams, you know, Derek Coleman came through, he didn't really want to be there. And then you had the young cats, me and Allen, and you know, we just getting drafted. We just trying to prove that we can play. We still getting 20 apiece, mm -hmm. but it again, win. it's just, you know, we're not winning. And I think ultimately we had to make a decision that, um, you know, we got two scoring guards who need to try to build this team. And, and they chose to build it around you know, the Allen. I went to Detroit, I had a successful uh, run there. And, uh, but, but now it's just the, the nature of this business. Mm -hmm. How did the Fila deal come about? Uh, I, actually, I, it, it kind of just fell into place. I mean, I was, I was a Nike guy, really. I mean, I, I wanted Nike to, to, to step up, but I mean, I think they've kind of, uh, decided they weren't really giving any signature shoes that, that year. They still wanted me to come in. They wanted me to be in a, in a stable of, of young guys. To, but, you know, Fila just stepped up. You know, mm -hmm. I had the same representation as Grant Hill. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first came out, I was with um, Advantage. It's, it's, you know, now it's Octagon. Uh, and, and so they did the deal right before, and I was the third pick. So, you know, he was the third pick. This was a deal that he got. So it's just natural increase for them to come in and offer me the same, you know, five-year deal, man. It was crazy. I have, you know, more money from the, the shoe deal than I did from the, the contract, from the contract mm -hmm. because we were the very first year of the rookie, rookie salary cap. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, the guys before us, Grant Hill and Big Dog, they signed, like, you know, $40 million deal. You know, we signed, like, you know, single mm -hmm. single number, single million dollar deal for, for, for our first deal. We had to prove it. You know, yeah. we were one of that first groups that wasn't nothing, any, nothing was given to us. You had to prove mm. that you're going to be able to hang around this league. And, you know, fortunately for us, we did. Uh, you get traded. You spoke on it uh, to Detroit. You teamed up with Grant Hill. Um, for people that don't know, obviously injuries derailed his career. But how special was Grant when Grant was healthy? We ain't got no time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got it. He was cold. He was cold. I mean, it was like, <laughs> cold. you know, because he... He was unselfish, man. He was like LeBron from the standpoint of he could handle the basketball. He would look to make plays for others, but he could he could score at will. He could you know, couldn't really keep him in front of you. Um, off the bounce, he could go out and down in the post and, and play. Um, if, and it was probably the only weakness that you probably would say about Grant uh, was, was probably defensively, mm. right? Was and then. At the end of his career, he goes to Phoenix and he becomes a defensive stopper. Yeah, so, you yeah. know, when you look at his body of work, man, mm -hmm. um, if he if he wouldn't have got hurt, and I think that played a you know a big part of us kind of I mean, we were we were on our way. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think we were probably one of the best tandems in the mm -hmm. league, you know, behind, you know, Scotty and, and, and MJ at mm -hmm. the time. But I think some, you know, I gotta read this book. I gotta get get this new book and kind of, you know get the story on why did he really leave? Why did he go to Orlando? But I think, you know, there were some other things in there as far as his wife and some opportunities that he could have for mm -hmm. the big picture of, of his family. Um, but, you know, man, it was definitely 
but you know, but it was cool. I had a chance for that one year to really explode. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. show that I could you know lead the team You're you know here. on my own. You know yeah. we um, you know put up you know almost thirty. 30 a game, you know, mm-hmm. in, in his absence, I feel like I had to, you know, take on that that load. But quickly, I found out that I needed more guys. You yeah. know, what I'm saying I think it, and, and uh, so I, my scoring average, you know, Rick Carlisle came in and he was like, "Stack, you know, I need you to be a decoy." I mean, everybody knows that you can score 30. I need you to take, you know, score 25. I'm like, what? You know, what I'm saying at first, and then he was like, you know. Um, we want to put you in more pick and rolls. We know that we're going to trap you, and then you know they're, we're, they're going to play four on three on the other side, and we're going to win. And you know it took a little buying into it, and, but you know I bought into it, and we did. We mm-hmm. went from 32 and 50 the year that I averaged, you know, almost 30 to 50 and 32 when I averaged 24. Mm-hmm. So, so Big it's change. like. So it's like, you know, sometimes, um, you know, less is more. Yeah. And then I think that ultimately, you know, and that's my message again, when you talk about all the coaches that I played for, those are situations and stories that I can, you know, reflect back on mm-hmm. when I'm talking to a guy about, you know, being a little more selfless and, and, and how we can gain as a whole from, from, from that approach. I mean, this is something else you could talk to him about. Uh, players in the 2000 average 29 plus, Shaq, LeBron, KD, Kobe, AI, D, uh, D. Wade, T. Mac, and yourself. Mm-hmm. What do you think when you hear that? I told you, couldn't nobody stop me. I already knew. You know, so it, was, it, so it was like, man, I already, you know, I had, I had 20 before I got off the bus. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> just, just can I just start with, there. Well, yeah, when, when, when this other 10 going to happen and how it's going it's gonna to come about. But no, it was just... Man, it was a fun time when you look at those names and you, you see your name amongst that. But again, uh, for me, and ultimately to to win, Winning. that you know I had to, I couldn't stay where where they were at those numbers. I had to give a little more. I had to get more assists, and, mm-hmm. and, and ultimately, um, after I left De- Detroit, um, you know, went to Washington, got to Dallas, you know, and was able to you know get with Dirk and and and, and have probably the best team that I ever played on. Um, there, um, you, you really saw it. You know, I mean, that was a, that, that finals run that we that, that mm-hmm. we had, man. That was by far of uh, you know, and I probably averaged probably one of the less amount of my years, probably 13, 14 coming off off the bench. You know, mm-hmm. that was you know Nelly, that was my, my my man. I didn't know how we were even gonna kick it. I heard it. I was just kind of passing through, but so. Nelly is like he came to me like stack. You're a starter, but I can only start five guys. But you're gonna play starter minutes, and you're gonna be there at the end of the game. That's all I need to hear, coach. Mm-hmm. And then you know, Nelly, he was, uh, he gave turned it over to to Avery in the year. But man, it was just just fun being able to play with you know a, a, a nice you know our bench. We you know, we, we were the deep. ones that really first started that bench mob with that was Jason Terry and, mm-hmm. and, and and all those guys. We were all coming off the bench. Uh, Mike Finley and all those guys, they, they were starting. But, man, can you imagine what practice looked mm, like, though? War. That's oh, back when was, we really used to practice. And oh, the man. second unit used to beat the first unit in a lot of, in a lot of different teams. What? Right? Like, you know, and, and it was just about competitive. It made the game easy. By the time we got to the games, uh, you know, they were easy because we were we, we were battling in practice every day. Y'all ran into a fucked up team in 07. Yes, sir, uh, man. Don't bring that up. It's two of those fucked up yeah. guys sitting here right now. I remember, <laughs> <laughs> but I rem- I, the, the one thing I remember... But I was cutting at y'all ass, though. That's what I was about to say. That's what I was about to say. The you, two you, motherfuckers were kept going where you and Josh that's Howard... That's it. Y'all don't want to fight that. Y'all don't want to fight that. would be so mad at the air because I I love Stackhouse, but I didn't really know him like that at the time. So I was just kind of, this is my first year really rocking Link. So I'm just looking, he's mad as fuck at the end of the game on the bench. Like, yeah. He got, I, I remember like, game, yeah. game six, he came in and hit three threes off right the rip. Right to start. Yep, yeah, off man. the rip. You don't want fighting back, though. But that uh, wasn't enough. Yeah, JT, nah, nah, y'all boys, y'all had our number. Y'all ain't had nothing to lose. Y'all had was, Nelly over there. Nelly, yeah. Yeah. When Nelly felt like shit, we won that series. He didn't give a fuck about the no, next series. No, 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 that was our championship. He wanted, he wanted to put, he wanted to stick, stick to the cube. Straight he up, to stick to the cube, and he knew. Hell, he he drafted Dirk. He yeah. found him. Bro, he know? told yeah, us yeah, everything yeah. about yeah. Dirk. Bro. You know, he was, he was getting up under yeah. him and and all that. Man, like, 
man, put man, put Dirk, put his little ass in the basket, man. man. We was on him. We was that. on him. He would not. He would not wrestle with man, me. Nah, Charlie. man, it was that. But the, if you guys did, did a hell of a job, BD was was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, Jay Rich. Like I said, I remember, man. We was. I was meeting them at top everything. Hey, but that's that, that that says a lot about that team for the for that to happen and to come back how y'all came back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to, man. It was a, it was a tough. Had to make that run. You know, that, that sometimes that's, that gets you to that next level, man. Yeah. That, that 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 heartache, that that defeat, and then you come back and you you make a strong run. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the run you guys had against D Wade in '06. Questionable call, a lot of questionable calls in that series that people kind of still talk about to this day. What's, what's your perspective on it? Yeah, a lot of questionable calls that, that, that <laughs> people still talk about to this day. But no, I, I think it was, you can't take anything away from them Obviously. that they won. I, right. I think a lot of it, to me, I put it on the format, which has since changed, mm -hmm. right? Again, for when you work hard and you work hard for home court, court advantage, you yeah. shouldn't come back home possibly down, you know, that 2-3-2 two, two mm -hmm. format. And again, even those those games in the middle were, you know, a lot, lot happened. I got suspended a game mm -hmm. for, you know, for a hard foul. foul right. And, um, you know, and I was, I'm sitting in the, you know, you know, sitting in, in the hotel room knowing that I could make a difference, that mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we would have went back home, you know, at least up 3-2, you know, mm -hmm. in two of those games. And there was some marginal calls that, that went against us, but mm -hmm. and and then they had kind of the the momentum when we came back home, you know. So it was uh, all, all that the shouldn't shouldn't feel that type of pressure after you had the type of regular season that we had, mm -hmm. you know. After going up, you know, two zero, you know, I mean, that, that, that's still a. But that's but tough. but looking at it, man, we just we, we got away from the from the game plan, you know. Saying ultimately, you know, we know that we wanted to, um, you know, that he was a rhythm left, and we want to get on his right hand and. We didn't do it, mm -hmm. and, and I think, and ultimately, you know, that cost us. I mean, Dwayne had an unbelievable Oof, series. He was you incredible. Know, he, he, he was great, but, you know, he shot probably a few more free throws than he should have, <laughs> but, you know, and <laughs> one in particular that, 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 you know, that basically changed That's the series, the game, but yeah. one call. Um, I'm still, you know, I've never been one to, to cry over spill Mick. Well, it, it, it is what it is, and, you know, we had our opportunities. We didn't seize those, those opportunities, but, they should have changed that format yeah. before that year, you know, mm. two, two, one, one, one. And mm. I think we, you know, I'll be just yeah. sitting up here in some, some company, with, you know, with, yeah. with, with, with some, some hardware some and some, some rings. So, I mean, <laughs> people don't know how hard it is to right. get back to Man. that spot. You think you going to get back because you made a nice run, but it's just never, never that easy again. Mm -hmm. And we never made it back. A lot of luck goes into oh, play. A lot of it, a lot of it. <clears throat> You ended up playing 18 total seasons. At what point did you decide it was enough? Was it the body or they kind of was pushing you out? No, I, I, I thought I could have, I probably could have played another right. year, um, but it was just some other opportunities. I mean, I really got kind of entrenched into the business of basketball, understanding, you know, at first, you know, I really was caring about the, you know, players association meetings and things like that. We were just wondering when the, they were going to pass out the checks, the checks right? Yep. You know what I'm saying? And I think we all <laughs> kind of fell into that trap. And then as I got older and, and understanding that, um, you know, that the players really have a lot of power and, and understanding that we have to utilize that power mm -hmm. and we have to take advantage of it. Unlike the NBA where they have, um, you know, the same turnover. You know, those guys are there every year. You know, mm -hmm. we're like fungible assets. You know, we leave and then there's new guys and mm -hmm. we really don't, you know, maintain that institutional knowledge. You know, we don't give it back to that other group and they have to come and learn it all over Big again. On, yeah. So it was important for me um, to try to transition into doing some things with the PA. Um, and and then I uh, just had an opportunity to, to, to get into to coaching. You know, I, mean, I was always, a, a guy that gravitated to the young guys. I used to bring the rookies and stay with me when I was in Detroit just to make sure they got to practice on time. Um, you know, I would, you know, work out with them, show them different moves, different things like that, because I, I, I didn't feel threatened by right. younger players. Yeah, and that, and that's yeah. that, because I was, that happened to me in Philly. You know, I mean, I had some old heads that, you know, didn't want to show me anything. Didn't want, I mean, mm -hmm. I was coming off screens getting cracked. You know what I'm saying? Because I never chased off screens before. I was a power forward. And now, you know, Vern Maxwell, man, shout out to Vern. I'm hooking up Be with Max. him later today. Be V-Show was like, man, put, put your hand on that on, on his ass, pimp. Put his ass when he come <laughs> off that screen. 
you, you, you show him pimp. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. you, you show him across the screen. They don't know if it's his momentum or yours, pimp. Yeah. And, and, and once, <laughs> that's him. <laughs> that's him. When, 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 once he taught me that, it was over. I was running Allen Houston and Ray Allen ass into that first row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, and so I think just from, from that, um, you know, I always felt like I was going to get back to those guys. I wasn't going to be one of those vets that didn't feel like I was going to share with the young guys because I was threatened by what, you know, what they brought to the table. And I think, you know, uh, that my final year, my 18th year in Brooklyn, you know, Avery brought me in to be more of a, a coach. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in my mind, you know, I'm saying all the right thing, I coach, but, you know, I wanted to play. Yeah. Right, you know, so as soon as we got out there and then I'm like, man, this, you know, these, these young dudes, Marshawn Brooks, and, um, you know, they, they're talented, but they ain't gonna play over me, you right. know what I'm saying, if they're really trying to win. So I got out there and again, um, even in my final year, I was I was contributing. She was in, uh, she and Kurt Thomas was in New York, they was with the Knicks, so we used to meet up all the time and just like, it was like our, our victory tour, you know, our, our last year and then um, from that I had an opportunity to, um, and I felt like I had to get some separation. I knew that I wanted to coach, but they still kind of, we got to, what you got to get that player stink off of you a little bit, so to speak, because <laughs> they don't really take you serious as long as you're still playing. But mm -hmm. then once you got, I did some broadcast and I did XM radio, did some things on NBA TV to stay close mm -hmm. to the game. And then I got an opportunity um, um, to, you know, start my own AAU program. I did really well there. Um, uh, and they asked, Adidas asked me to take a team over to, to Treviso, Italy. And there I was able to get in front of a bunch of GMs and for them to see me coach. And, you know, Masai Ujiri called me. It was like, we're looking to add a former player to, to our staff. And, you know, would you be interested in interviewing for the job? I went up, interviewed for the job. You know, Dwayne Casey hired me. You know what I'm saying? I learned a lot from Case, too. Again, just how the management of, you know, a business, such a professional, the, the details of how to, to, to go by your business on a day-to-day -day basis from a, from a coaching standpoint. I was able to see that firsthand. And um, man, then they asked me to coach the G League. You know, I went down there and you know, first year out, you know, we, we got it done. Won you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Won a chip. And next year we went back to the finals again and um, had an opportunity to, I actually interviewed for the, for the job. You know, I thought I had a good shot of getting a Toronto job when they decided to move away from Case. Um, they gave it to Nick Nurse. Mm -hmm. And then I took an assistant job with Memphis for a year, and then Vanderbilt called about you know the the, the president of of the G League who saw me kind of build and, and how I went about my business as a team. He got the the AD job at um, at Vanderbilt, and, and he called me like, you know, we we where we are, we need you. Development is huge. They understood how we got out there on the floor and grinded, and, and that was kind of my message in my interview, and. I got the job and kind of the, the rest is history. That's where mm -hmm. I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Love to hear it. Uh, quick hitters, man. First thing to come to mind, let us know. Your UNC starting five could be with you or without you. Mm. I'm going with um, Phil Ford <laughs> for sure. Uh, got, got to go with Phil. Uh, I had my first year in Charlotte. Uh, MJ. Uh, Myself, uh, Vince, and she. Mm. Nice. And I could go a thousand different ways with mm -hmm. that. I mean, yeah. with, I mean, I could go with uh, Kenny, MJ, uh, Vince, uh, James Worthy, and, and, and Sam Perkins. <sighs> Ooh, Lord. Come on, that's the, that's that second team. A third team. You know, you, we can keep 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 going with it, man. It's just there's so many guys Deep. that. You know, Twan, did I, did I even mm -hmm. have Twan no, on the team? Yeah, Twan. God. Mr. Uh, 22K plus score the league. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he, he's going, that that was a bucket. You know, mm -hmm. so, so it's just like, man, so, so many guys. One night in Vegas, keywords right here. This is keywords here. I like to hear them. All expenses paid. Three people that, you, that you're going to kick it with. In Ooh. Vegas, all expenses paid. Three people. Living or nah, it don't anybody. Yeah, I'm, anybody. I'm, I'm going with Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, mm. and uh, Martin Luther King. So y'all, what's your so, 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 one uh, night in what's that movie? One night in uh, Miami. one night in Miami. Yeah, that's what you want. But you're gonna turn to the Vegas. Those are the type. 
I just want to get in their mind, just, just fuck for a game. little bit. I ain't even worried about kicking mm -hmm. it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. you know, I got, I done kicked it enough to. to, to <laughs> right. they ain't got to do that. I'm, yeah, I just want to get, get, get with some of those I'm those like, major minds. Yes, sir. Uh, it, it, at the early Malcolm X, you might y'all might party a little bit. Oh, we're gonna kick it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Red. Detroit Red. Now Detroit you know, Red was a player now. Cause cause Sam died and Sam Cook gonna be somewhere around. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to put a little tune together with Sam. Speaking of music, uh, one album you can listen to with no skips? Uh, Illmatic. Ooh, good call. Illmatic. Mm -hmm. Give me an R&B album, because people don't know you sing. Oh, uh, man. That 112. 112. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 112. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. First thing you do in the morning, and last thing you do before you go to bed? I'm going straight to that bathroom. That's <laughs> Take the Browns to the Super Bowl, huh? <laughs> the Browns, Browns to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I get then, it. I, then I'm good for the day. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then shoot, the last thing, shoot, I don't know. Um, I'm going to relax a little bit. I'm going to give, give me a little nightcap. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Shut it down. Some yeah. grown man shit. Yeah. Grown man. Piece of advice you would give your younger self? piece of advice, man, just, again, probably same thing that I would just, just listen, you know what I'm saying? Listen, listen, and, and, and be patient. Don't, don't try to, try to rush it. Don't try to get there too fast. Just, mm -hmm. just take your time and enjoy it. And I think, you know, it was so much about getting to the next thing. Even when he was in high school, it was about getting to college. I mean, mm -hmm. college is about getting to the pros. It was pros about getting, becoming an all-star. All-star about winning the champ. And then it just, just relax and, and let it happen. So that's what I, I think mm -hmm. I would, tell myself that, you know, because I probably was more stressed in than, than I was toward the, you know, the end of my career and now. Mm -hmm. You know, people's like, man, you you look younger than you did when you played. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I was, I had things on my mind. Mm -hmm. then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just, mind I racing. Did, you know, now I can just focus on trying to, you know, show other guys, show, show these young guys that I'm, you know, I mean, I got, I got great people at Vanderbilt there that su support me. Since I've been my AD, my you know my chancellor, man, they they see what we're building, you know, and so it's, it's an exciting time for us, and we're just ready to um, take it to the next level, man. You know, we, we took took our lumps for for a couple of years, and now I got a nucleus. It's fun to watch. Now I got my my older guys teaching teaching the younger guys, mm -hmm. you know. So it's not like we got to teach everybody, and that's you know that's that's really refreshing when you can you know, see those other guys pulling guys off and showing them how we go about our business and how we do things. And so uh, I'm expecting uh, big things and, and a huge year for, for, for my guys. If you could have one guest on All The Smoke, who would it be? But you have to help us get your answer on the show. Mm, I probably already had him. Oh, man, that's... Damn, that's that's a tough one there, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, gotta, I gotta think about that one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He gonna uh, MJ ain't been on the show yet? No, he has not. <laughs> oh, man. He has not. Wow, wow. And I know for a fact, and I know I ain't the biggest, but I know my relationship with Mike from when I played there. And if I had a chance to look him in his face and ask him to come on my show, he would do it. But sending all these messages to everybody else, it ain't gonna happen. But if I seen him face to face, yeah. I know he would come on the show. Yeah. People saying, Mike ain't come on your show. I'm telling you. Trust me, if I had a chance to get Mike face and ask him, he would do it. Because yeah. Mike really than y'all think. No doubt. That's what I just told you. I mean, that's the best thing mm -hmm. that you can do. Like I said, a lot of go-arounds and in-betweens, that ain't going to happen. Mike did. Mike real real to the man, you, the man the himself, source. and I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll be, he'll be sitting here. Well, you heard it first. Stackhouse is going to get MJ. Appreciate <laughs> 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 no, nah, but uh, man, Stack, man, we appreciate your time here today. Uh, best of luck next week. We're going to be checking out for you. Yes, sir. And uh, man, continue blessing. Appreciate, appreciate you, brothers, you, man. man. Thank, Thank you, man. Y'all keep doing your thing. Yeah, man, we got our boys yes, coming up, so we yeah. might be sitting yeah, on your yeah, way. Yeah, I already gotta, talked uh, about it, man. We, we got to get back. Yeah, he talked, we yeah, talked so, to him about Yes, sir. He asked about the twins. So you know, I, I do well with former former players' kids. Yeah. So, yeah, let's, yeah, I'll take another one. <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Another two. Okay. Yeah. Legends.com. Okay. Legends and all the smoke. All the yeah. smoke. You yes, know what I'm talking about? I'm going to have to wear these. And. And. And, <laughs> and, and big bro. You might yeah. get you a bigger size. I still, yeah, yeah, those, yeah. I still got those pink uh, I'm still Jordans. old school a little bit. Yeah. Those pink Jordans for you. I my got man, my I man. Got yeah, I appreciate these, that. These are a medium. We need like a, yeah, a, a yeah, XL yeah. or 2X. Gucci daddies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he not going to know white ball to drip on them motherfuckers right there. Right. My mama might like them, though. You know what I'm saying? Hey, give, give them back. Give them back. <laughs> man, <laughs> man, 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 you can find this episode. 
The Jerry Stackhouse on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. What happens when you see it? It's smiling at me, but not a friendly smile. The worst smile I've ever seen. It wears people's faces like masks. Why is it that everybody else who's seen it is dead and you're alive? You have it. Get away from me! I am not who we keep running. I have to face it. Smile. Rated R. Now streaming on Paramount+. Plus.